Hello guys, uh, I'm International Master Andrei Ostrovsky and this is Learn From Chess Bleeds, a live show that gives you an opportunity to learn something new about chess while playing against me. If you're new to the show, we play on leechess.org, just go there um, and uh, challenge me for a five-minute game. Uh, by the way, uh, this show has two editions, the one is the Sunday edition and the one is the Monday edition. So on Sundays, I usually play just normal chess. On Mondays, I try to experiment with uh, different things, including some uh, strange opening lines and so forth. So today is Sunday. That means you can expect something normal, standard, uh, just a pure positional chess. So our main topic today is strategy. So I will be focusing on uh, explaining plans mainly. Um, as for other things, if you want to improve your chess, I just recommend you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you can find uh, a lot of instructive stuff there. Uh, so not only live streams, but also some instructive chess videos. So you can find uh, the link below. It is bit.ly slash Mastrovsky. Uh, also a good idea to be notified in time about my uh, videos, uh, live streams and other stuff. Uh, is to follow me on Twitter. Uh, so uh, I'm Master Ostrovsky there. And uh, one more thing I wanted to tell you before we start playing chess. Um, I also started doing the stuff on chess.com. Uh, for this reason, uh, I use uh, Twitch. And you can also find the link to my Twitch account uh, there below. Uh, it is twitch.tv slash um, So uh, you probably know that I'm a member of uh, uh, Las Vegas Desert Rats team. It is the uh, uh, Pro Chess League team and well I'm doing a uh, 30 hours challenge uh, streaming for uh, these guys. This will help me to become a local player there and uh, I will actually uh, help these guys to compete in the upcoming season of um, Pro Chess League on chess.com. So it will be nice if you will also follow me on Twitch and uh, uh, actually attend my uh, shows on chess.com uh, because I'm completely uh, new to Twitch TV. I have no followers there and well, it will be just nice to uh, see you somewhere around uh, talking to you and so forth. Okay, uh, I'm really happy that there are so many uh, guys already uh, watching this and uh, actually waiting for a game. Um, so let's start. Let's just start it. Uh, I already have three challenges and uh, the first that gets the game today is Azure Mist. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I'm playing with white pieces, okay. E4, C5, Sicilian. So I usually play something like Bishop C4 against the Azure Mist. So he plays a6 and uh, what I wanted to try instead of uh, bishop c4 today is something that I probably have never played uh, during my life show so I will play g3 also interesting positional move I prepare the development of the bishop on g2 uh, where it will control d5 square and now after e5 there are usually two options uh, for white to go away with the knight. The one is uh, knight to e2, uh, preparing uh, something like h3, g4, and then knight throw uh, e2 goes to g3. Another option just to play knight to b3, standard uh, move after e5 in Nidorf. And uh, here we deal with another idea. Uh, what white will try to do is uh, actually to undermine black's pawn whenever it is on b5. Um, also, the idea for white here is to bring the knight to d5 at some point. And after e takes d5, for example, this way, um, well, the knight through b3 can go to a5 and to c6, occupying this weakened square. Okay, so at the moment, I have to make a decision. So there is a possibility to play knight d5 right now. One move. Another move is to play a4, but I don't actually want... Um, prevent b5 so I want uh, black to play b5 uh, to undermine it after that 
So what are useful moves for white here? They are probably h3 controlling a g4 square, rook to e1, occupying the uh, potentially open file. When I play knight d5, it will be opened. Uh, it is also possible to develop the uh, dark squid bishop. Uh, here, um, I have an interesting possibility to put it on e3, on d2 as well. But if I play bishop d2, then there is, of course, d5 move. So most likely this rook e1 isn't that bad with the idea of putting the bishop on d2 then. Okay, let's start with the rook e1. Knight to d7. Okay, so d5 is no longer possible, at least right now. So probably I can put my bishop on d2 here if I want. But do I want to do this? I'm not sure. Uh, why bishop d2? Because from there it will control a5 square. As I said before, uh, at some point I will have a chance to put my knight there. So let's try this bishop d2. Knight c5, okay. So here I guess we can try this knight d5, finally. So it feels like it is prepared. So let's go there. And now my bishop controls a5, so if black doesn't exchange my knight b3, I will probably play this knight a5. Uh, by the way, at the moment, additional idea is to play bishop to a5, maybe, attacking the queen and grabbing b6 square at some point. Grounding student says that Azure doesn't usually play e5. Okay, he doesn't play e5 just because I usually play bishop c4 against Azure. Uh, and after bishop c4, of course, e5 isn't that great. That's probably the reason why we didn't see e5. Uh, okay, let's take this way. Again, bishop e a5 may be a threat. Knight takes d5, e takes d5. Fuchsia says, time Andre, your old enemy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I guess this position should be just equal now. So after this exchange on d5, both sides have uh, very clear plans. White wants to play uh, on the queen side, try and b4, c5. Black wants to do something like f5, e4, f4 maybe, and so forth. But we will see who will benefit from this uh, pawn structure. So bishop a5 no longer looks that attractive. I'd rather just stick to b4, c5, and so forth. Okay, Paul says that he found my Twitch account. Yeah, that is there. Twitch.tv slash Mostrovsky. Uh, rook c8 attack in c4. All right, I think I have to play b3 here, just protecting the pawn. And f5, very logical. Very, very logical. All right, now it feels like I have to stop this pawn because if it goes to f4, it will be extremely annoying. So I will just play f4 now. Okay, e4 closes position. And this bishop g6 will be quite bad, I, I hope. But my bishop on g2 is also not that cool. But at very least, I hope for something like, oh, that is a big, big mistake. <laughs> Bishop c3 was possible there. So black just missed a great opportunity. There was a big blunder. Okay, let's prevent it. And it's time, I guess, to play c5, or maybe to start with Bishop f1, I don't know what is better. 
I just play c5, I think it's prepared. So I can potentially improve my bishop through f1. And this dc5, well, this just improves my pawns, and now my pawns are very good. Very strong ones. b6 mm, why not to take because bishop takes c3 all right so let's take on a6 instead and let's go i think check should be helpful here that's another mistake. I'm so sorry I'm playing so stupid. I'm just losing here. Come on. It's a big blunder. So I wanted to play bishop f1 after that, but now <laughs> there is just queen takes f1. My god. Yeah, I was too focused on, on plans instead of playing chess. Ah, oh, that is the first time Azur wins the game against me, I think. Yeah. That's it. Congratulations, my friend. That was a good good game. So you played normal. I played like an idiot. All right. All right, all right. So let's have a look at that. Uh, first of all, um, let's start with the uh, things that happened by the end of the game. So uh, to start with here, so most likely f4 was not correct in this position. So on the other hand, I wanted to stop that pawn on f5, but maybe it was better for me just to ignore this f4 move because if black plays, uh, let's say f4, then I have an interesting idea of playing bishop h3, then bringing my bishop to e6. So some moves like c5 deserve attention here. And um, also what? Maybe, I don't know, this position doesn't look very attractive for white, to be honest. So yeah, feels like f4 was, was okay, more or less. Okay, e4 was played. Uh, I think that also something like queen b6 deserved attention. Uh, in this case, uh, if I play bishop to e3, black can capture my pawn on b4, which is absolutely unclear. Maybe black just, uh, uh, maybe he's just better there, I don't know. So let's check if the queen isn't trapped there after rook a4. But okay, queen goes to c3, I can't see how can I trap it. So everything is more or less fine. Um, but I can try something like c5 instead. After d takes c5, f takes c5. This position is unclear. So I have this very strong pawns in the center. And yeah, this can be potentially very annoying for black. So I guess, yeah, e4 was a correct decision, more or less. I mean, if compared to queen b6, it was definitely better. Uh, but another interesting thing that black could have done is just to keep the tension, something like bishop f6 here. Uh, because if white takes on uh, e5, then bishop takes e5. I think this position is very good for black. In fact, this bishop on e5 is just perfect. Black is ready to open up uh, my king side with the f5, f4, and white's pieces are just not coordinated well. Uh, so bishop f6, I just like this move better than this e4. So e4 gives me a chance to come up with uh, quite... Um, Natural setup, very comfortable position. The only thing after bishop f6, I shouldn't uh, play this rook a5. Rook a5 was a big mistake. So of course, rook c1 should be played here, covering c3 square, bishop b2 isn't uh, that uh, dangerous because of my rook c2 move. And I'm ready to play c5 here. So I don't think uh, black has a chance to stop it. So I'm just much faster here. As we may notice, my bishop can join the um, 
play on the queen side quickly so through f1 then i play c5 and my bishop is already here uh, going to c4 so something like this can happen here and so uh, black's pawns are just stuck here on the king side so black doesn't have this quick counter play all right that is the problem so rook a5 was a big mistake bishop c3 is of course the winning move for black uh, because look if uh, i play bishop to d2 queen goes to b6 and if i play c5 here then after d c5 uh bishop takes c3 and c takes b4 oh this is unclear because i can play queen d4 look at this tactics very interesting so queen d4 just attacking the queen and the pawn on g7 simultaneously wow nice yeah and the queen queen is hanging so there is no rook c3 or b3 yeah that is interesting so probably the things are not that clear here okay d4 okay c5 black can play bishop d4 check another intermediate possibility so a lot of intermediate checks here and then takes on c5 i guess and my rook on a5 is kind of uh, not that protected if uh, for example i play bishop e3 or something yeah this position is definitely not that great um, so instead uh, he played queen to e8 now i play queen to d2 maybe uh, it was better for me to try even bishop d4 so why not it's a good idea to exchange these bishops i guess because well our bishops are both not that great i mean g2 and g6 but if i will have this good centralized queen on d4 supporting c5 and a bunch of other things i guess i will i will feel very good but even this was was okay especially after dc5 and bc5 i thought my position is very close to winning and that was probably my mistake so it was too early to make this conclusion here instead of d6 i guess the most natural move for white was bishop to f1 preventing this queen b5 bringing the bishop to c4 and only after that playing something like d6 once again i believe my position is better because uh, my pieces are potentially much more active and uh, my pawns can move while black pawns are blockaded um, but I played d6 that is also not bad uh, the only thing after queen b5 why the hell did I play this queen d5 I don't know so bishop f1 should be played here attacking the queen um, what I wanted to prevent this queen takes b3 but I'm not sure that queen b3 is so clear because here I have I guess something like d7 at least just attacking the rook pawn on c5 is under pressure black's rook can't go away from the back rank because it takes the bishop on f6 and then play d8 so I definitely take this pawn back and again I have much more active setup uh, probably it's no longer the advantage but looks quite annoying for black to play yeah but queen d5 was a serious blunder just bishop f7 and it's losing I think right 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 yeah let's go further thanks a lot for this experience let's play crowning student now if I'm not not mistake uh, if I'm not mistaken, Kramnik student was the second who challenged me today, so quite logical that uh, I play the second game against him. So knight of three, all right. Knight of six, g3. So I'm gonna try something closed. So usually I play e4 against Kramnik student. This time want to try something else so c4 something like english opening set up with the pawn on c4 and the bishop there fan catoed now i have a chance to play knight c3 i think controlling d5 and i guess now d4 is okay for me there is also a chance to play just d3 uh, but i feel It feels like d4 is just slightly more ambitious, right? Grabbing some central squares. And uh, actually opening the bishop g2. So bishop g2 is a key piece here. It exerts some pressure along diagonal h1, a8. And it's logical stop just to do everything to make it as active as possible. All right, just a second. A4, 
a6 okay so it can make sense of course and it's probably black prepares b7 b5 but it will be hard for black to play b5 so what is the drawback of playing a6 is that b6 square is slightly weakened now but can i use it immediately i don't think so So I can play h3 here, preparing bishop to e3. But I guess usually white tries to develop this bishop on b2, if I'm not mistaken. But if I play b3 here, there is some tactics like knight e4, queen d4, knight e4, queen takes, bishop takes c3. At the same time, I don't want to go away from d4 square. All right, let's play h3 and c. What will happen after that? Was he swearing? No, uh, he was uh, actually uh, writing the bullshit uh, in Russian. Yeah. I don't understand why they usually come and uh, write a bullshit in Russian. So I'm not against Russian language in chat. I don't know, just one or two phrases uh, because I speak Russian, I understand Russian and so forth. But when you start just spamming with, with a con con concrete bullshit, come on, you're just blocked immediately. e5 all right this weakens d5 seriously i don't think it is a good idea so i'll just play knight to c2 and then the knight will go through e3 to d5 so i think it is a serious mistake uh, with the bishop on g7 if black plays d6 this d6 will be vulnerable itself a strange decision i understand that black probably wanted me to take on c6 in that case black is fine but well this way strange can you hear my song screaming by the way that's interesting Riddick says, okay, that's bad. Then I saw something similar to his name. Yeah, he was writing something like, I am blah, 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 and this is a great Russian name, and so forth. When people start saying that it is a great Russian name, uh, I predict that the next thing will be that Russians are great, and so forth. So uh, these guys are trying to do this just because they know that I'm from Ukraine, and you know the stuff. So these guys are just blocked immediately. No chance, I mean, and so forth. Okay, because he's doing that, uh, yeah, in a very loud fashion. So probably you all can hear him screaming. Uh, for now, it is just unavoidable. I'm sorry, but I can do nothing to fix it. So Bishop A3. Okay, I know what should I do. I should actually uh, buy the new mic uh, that will be not that sensitive. Uh, well, I'm in the progress. <clears throat> so that is what I was talking about. So this pawn d6 is potentially a big problem for black. So let's play queen d2, just preparing rook to d1. F5. 
F4 is coming. Again, I'm not sure this will be very, very dangerous. So if F4, I'll just play knight to E4, I guess. Oh, rook F6. Another strange decision, but this is just a protection of the D6. Okay, can I just play C5 now? Attacking it. Aha, uh -huh, now I understand the idea behind f5, just to play rook f6 and then probably to bring the bishop to f8, something like this. Okay. Very interesting. After c5, not only I attack the d6, there is also the idea of playing knight d5, knight b6, something like this. Christian, uh, yes, you can challenge me, of course, on leechess.org. Five minutes. Bishop f8. And now knight d5 looks interesting. Just attacking the rook. Then bringing the knight to b6, maybe. And even to c4 attacking this d6 additionally. <laughs> it's no longer that happy screaming, I think. <laughs> but my wife is about to fix that, I think. My goodness. Okay, Tom S types Andre. Tom. Hello. So knight takes f6, right? Extra exchange. A much better development. Okay, let's bring the knight to d5. I guess this is just a logical follow-up. And now what to do? It's an interesting question. Okay, I guess this should be not bad. And now my target is c5 mainly. I guess I can attack it like this. Now it's important not to blunder here, so rook to e1 should be played. Let the b5 drops the rook on d8. But I understand black was already in a serious time trouble. So I think that um, e5. So actually a6 is already something strange. So I guess uh, the best way for uh, black to play this position is actually to take on d4. And after queen d4 to play, for example, d6. Then bishop goes to e6. And black already has a threat of knight d5 or something. And everything is fine. Okay, b7 is under pressure, but it's a manageable thing. So uh, black can protect it. And what is really interesting, in some cases, black can even uh, sacrifice it. Uh, as for b3 here, for instance, preparing bishop b2, that is exactly what I was talking about. So here, uh, black has an interest in uh, tactics. So knight goes to e4, attacking the queen. Queen takes c4, now bishop takes c3, attacking the rook. And if I play rook to b1, then bishop goes to f5. Nice, isn't it? Uh, so most likely here I have to play something like bishop h6, but it's no longer uh, something that uh, I wanted to achieve here. So it takes here. All right, so bishop can come back to f6 if black wants. Uh, there is a possibility just to grab that bishop. In uh, all the cases, I think black is just okay. So there is uh, nothing specific in white's position. Uh, and by the way, here, after bishop a6, I think uh, rook e8 is also a possibility and so forth. And uh, as for the sacrifice of the b-pawn, uh, I mean, 
if I play bishop to other square, let's say I put it on, have no idea where even, because if I get uh, to f4, there is knight h5. If I play bishop g5, um, if I play bishop e3, there is knight g4, so maybe bishop g5. So here I think black can sacrifice a pawn easily. So bishop b6, bishop takes b7, rook b8. And uh, if I take on a7, there is queen c7, winning that bishop. And if my bishop goes away, there is b2 pawn, which is handy. Yeah. And a6, okay, it's possible to play. Uh, but once again, knight d4 was necessary here. But with the pawn on a6, as you can see, it is no longer that clear because uh, in some lines, when I take on b7, I can also take on a6. Uh, but it doesn't mean that knight d4 was, was bad here. So it was still playable, was okay. Uh, but e5 is a serious mistake. So after that, I just go away with the knight and look, so many uh, holes in black's position. This bishop becomes quite passive after e5 and the rest is simple. I just wanted to uh, attack d6 pawn. I did everything to attack d6 pawn because d6 was black's only way to uh, try to complete the development of the bishop c8. Um, and at very least I had a chance to grab the d5 square at uh, any uh, moment. So just to bring the knight there and to have this great centralized knight, just like in Sveshnikov variation. But for Sveshnikov variation, the bishop uh, is simply misplaced here on g7. So that was the main reason why position uh, became so so bad and quickly. So let us continue, right? Let us continue. The next is, um, let's say, Sarit. And again, white. So let's try English opening. Knight f6, knight c3, g6. So we can transpose, of course, to King's Indian. No problems with that. But I want to stick to this interesting setup with this great Fanchetto bishop on diagonal h1, a8. Castles. All right. This is also interesting to play e4 here and to put my knight on e2. Okay. And after e5, well, I can play d4 if I want slightly later, but I will try to play without d4. So just d3, then bring in my knight to d5 at some point. Another interesting plan. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it was. Uh, played by Botvinnik. So let's bring the knight to d5. Queen d7. Okay, now black probably wants to play bishop h3. Which is, I think, not that big problem for me because my bishop is anyway limited uh, by my own pawns. But what to do with this knight on f6? So I actually want black to take on d5 to open up the c file and so on. So when you have such a knight on d5, of course, the natural follow-up is to do something like before b5 or maybe d4 at some point. But I don't want to play d4 because this will open the diagonal for this bishop g7. Uh, bishop h3 is not a threat right away, I guess, because of some tactics based on knight c7. What is interesting is something like bishop g5, I guess, but then knight goes to e8 and I can't see follow-up and black prepares f7, f5. Maybe just to play f4 myself. I'm not a big expert in this position, so let's try f4. Of course, this potentially opens diagonal for that bishop g7, but if black takes on f4, okay, I'll have f file, some perspectives of bringing my pawns in the center to motion, so some interesting stuff. All right, and this gives me a chance actually to grab even more space with the f4, f5. I think it is a mistake. 
So obviously I can't take on h3 and on c7 because of knight g4. Attack on h2 and I have no defense. Uh, but what I can do here is just apply f5 right now. Yeah, this should be quite promising. Because after this exchange, I have my pawns on correct squares, right? right? So uh, light squares, I wanted to say <laughs> instead of right. Uh, so light squares uh, are occupied by my pawns while my bishop is a dark squared one. Just a good strategy, I think, for such a situation. And black has some problems, actually, with his bishop. Now what to do? Bishop e3 simply, or just taking on d4. But taking on d4 helps black slightly because diagonal for that bishop becomes longer. And the bishop potentially will have a square on e5. If I take on g6, f7 takes g6. So, I can probably just play bishop to g5 here, or starting with the knight d4, the same idea. Bishop g5, I guess. Attacking the knight. cd4. And now I have just a much better bishop. Just a much, much better bishop. Where to go? I think just here. So look, and especially after g5, g5 is a big mistake. It was necessary to keep the tension there, I guess. That was the only chance. Now I have a very clear plan. I will just play along the c file. So after cd5, it became open. And it's time to attack the pawn c7. So at some point, the difference between the pieces will become very noticeable and decisive, I guess. Now let's take. Queen a4 attacking both d4 and c6. Rook c8 takes d4. Okay, I have only one minute, so I have to be faster. So I already outplayed my opponent. Have extra pawn, much better pieces, but well, I still have to, still have to win this. Again, fixing pawns on correct squares for me and bad squares for my opponent. By the way, after king h8, I have some additional plans of just opening the h file at some point, just playing h4, uh, maybe after g4 and so on. But we'll see. Okay. Oh, I got 15 seconds. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. That was quite generous. And the new subscriber, who, whoever it is, thanks a lot. Your support is very important and really welcome. Again, just fixing pawns on correct squares. So now it's time to do something on the queen side because I think it will be uh, my side to play. So rook c4, typical lift, preventing this a4 and maybe intending to play rook a4 at some point. d4 is also an interesting is also an interesting move so yeah something like d4 should decide at some point just get into d6 pawn because at the moment the d file is closed right it's not that easy for me to attack this pawn but once i play d4 the files inevitably um, become open and it will be over all right, in this situation, I think I will just take another rook to c1. 
if d5 will take on c5, but most likely I should have played something like king f3 prior to playing that just to stop that counterplay. All right, let's bring the king closer to the center. Mm, what about this? Another transformation. Now there is a weakness. The file is open. So I have the access to d6 and a5. But black has a counterplay. All right, let's fix this weakness. This creates the one on b3, but the rook remains passive. Even if rook goes to b6, I play rook to b1. So now, what is my task? Just to come up with a breakthrough, I suppose. Well, I probably overestimated my position, so I don't have a lot here. My goodness, it's kind of fortress. Oh my, that was very bad conversion. Very, very bad one. Of course, position was absolutely winning, but come on, I misplayed this. In a so bad way, by the way. My opponent still gives me some chances, so I'm just regrouping my pieces with a good efficiency. So now my bishop can go to e3 at some point. And this one is already something that looks very close to winning. But again, I'm not sure how. One second only, I will lose this on time. Yeah, lost on time. Can you imagine? Position was absolutely winning, and then I started playing something strange. I think bishop c3, not here, but already here, was the first step in the wrong direction. So, oh yeah, that's annoying to lose such a position. No, okay, bishop c3 was correct, but after rook takes c4, I should have captured with another pawn, come on. Yeah, just um, avoiding this a4 counterplay and opening the b-file for my rook. So now if, uh, let's say, a4, just play rook b1. So I still have extra pawn and uh, great chances to win this. Uh, with the same e5 breakthrough at some point, or maybe just gradually preparing d4. Let's say king g8, uh, I can play this check. King f7, I can play rook b7, king goes back to g8. Black pieces are completely passive, now I can win this pawn if I want, so <laughs> that is just amazing, uh, yeah, position is so great, uh, bishop is so better, and extra pawn, so that was a mistake, I took on c4, and after rook a6, I probably made one more, so this a a4 was, was stupid, um, so I saw that after that it will be not that simple for me to come up with a breakthrough, but uh, I didn't actually uh, believe that there will be no chance, or at least it will be so uh, hard. So again, instead of playing a4, I should have played something else. Maybe, uh, maybe just work to d1. Again, just waiting slightly, and if black plays this, I can play this. And if c4, bishop b4, I just attack this one. And again, gradually should be winning, of course, because I have extra pawn and uh, much better pieces. Right, so a4 was another step in the wrong direction, and after king g8, uh, well, I played this e5 again, it was too early. I should have uh, been much better prepared for that. So, maybe to bring the king to c2, let's say, just protecting b3 and making my rook free, then to bring my rook to d5 square, something like that could be a plan. So, give me the arrow, come on, it doesn't give me the arrow somehow. Yeah, here is the arrow. Uh, then to bring the rook to d5, again, give me the arrow, please, no. 
So bring the rook to d5, all right? Let's forget about arrows for now. Um, and then at the proper moment when, uh, of course, black can't actually protect all the weaknesses uh, to play something like e5. Or maybe maneuver in the bishop somewhere, I don't know. It will be very hard after a4, so it's not that easy. Yeah, there was another mistake, I mean. And I, I think that I could have played much better uh, earlier. So somewhere here, it was a kai for me just to try maybe d4 immediately, uh, maybe something else. So Black's main mistake here was uh, actually to give me a chance to exchange correct pieces. And uh, this f6 move was, of course, a great, great uh, mistake. So instead of that, it was necessary just to play bishop e5. And in this case, position is not that clear. So yes, uh, I still have more space. It feels like that. Um, I still have um, better bishop, in my opinion, has more perspectives at least. Um, but uh, your bishop is no longer that uh, stupid on g7 doing nothing, right? So here at least it protects d4 pawn. So I don't have this uh, easy access to the pawn uh, d4. As it happened in our game. Yeah, that was an interesting idea. Um, and to start with, I think that uh, queen d7 is probably not the best way to play that. So in my opinion, when you see such a hole on d4, uh, you have to think of uh, something like uh, knight d7 move. That was an interesting idea. Just to bring the knight to c5, and at some point to e6, and then at some point to d4. But even if you stop somewhere on c5, so... Uh, and ensure this position with the a7, a5 move, this knight will be also quite good. And never forget your plan is just to play f5, right? Mm, because after all, you have this king's Indian setup. So you have to prepare f5, bishop b6, uh, just a waste of time, because bishop on e6 is not that better than on c8, in fact. So it does nothing here, all right? So knight d7, I believe, was a better try for you. Okay, one more subscriber. Thanks you. Thank you, guys. Um, let's go further. PhD Gunbarov, except. Bishop h6 at one point forced knight d5. Mm, yeah, it was possible, but uh, I think black could have played something like. Okay, even knight takes d5, where after I'm forced to take on g7. And uh, king takes g7, and bishop is exchanged. I mean, that bad bishop that I definitely wanted to uh, save in black's camp. All right, let's focus on the game. So knight f3, knight c6. Bishop b5, a6, Roy Lopez. Chromic student says, Andre, your channel will grow slowly. Mm, it's growing slowly, I would say. But I would be happy if we can replace slowly with quickly. <laughs> because um, you can't even imagine how it is sometimes hard to yeah, do in a lot, like try and push in and so forth and seeing uh, no results or something. But of course, there are results. There are so many guys, nice guys like you. Uh, watching each and every show of mine and actually learning and uh, improving. That is, after all, the main result, I think. And that is my primary goal, uh, just to make you learn, just to make you a better chess player. All right, let's go.
rook e1 b5 because it was already a shred of taking on c6 and taking on e5 bishop goes to b3 d6 protecting pawn e5 additionally and preparing the development of the light squared bishop <laughs> Kramnik students said very very important things just play stop this daydreaming correct that's one of the main reasons of my problems with the time so the lack of focusing and uh, daydreaming People like quick fix channels, play e4 and your opponent will suffer. Uh, I think the something like play g4 and your opponent will suffer will uh, get even more subscribers quickly. And new subscriber. Great. It is a good day today. It's a lot of new subscribers. Posting videos to Reddit can help. Well, I'm actually doing that. I'm doing that. And, well, some videos, of course, uh, get a lot of views after that. But I know that uh, there is a chance to come up with something uh, great at some point. So all of a sudden it will actually uh, give you a lot of views and hence a lot of subscribers and so forth yeah so the one has to be patient to conclude and just to do his stuff so now as far as i remember there is an interesting way for black to counter attack already here with the d5 so let's try it Bishop h5 was played just to avoid h3 with the temple. If you keep up the good work, the channel will inevitably grow. Yep. I also believe this. <laughs> So the main idea behind d5 is that uh, after playing this bishop b3 and knight d2, of course white completed the development, no questions, that was very useful. Uh, but at the, t at the same time as we may notice both the queen and the rook are kind of limited slightly. And uh, this gives black some opportunities in the center hands. So this heavy pieces don't have the direct access to d5 and e5 squares. That's the main point here. Okay, ed5, as far as I remember, there is a good idea to play ed4 with a further counterattack. Let's try it as well. This is interesting at the very least. And as for rated, by the way, uh, there are some limitations. So you can't actually post your own videos, at least for for a long time. So it is noticed and uh, you are most likely banned if you keep doing that. So it will be very helpful if uh, you guys can do this to help me a bit. This sort of support will be also really appreciate it so if you like the video not only uh, can you uh, for example uh, press the like button but you can also share it on reddit if you use reddit of course so rook takes e3 all right mm, now i'm a pawn down but i have a pair of bishops so 
there are some interesting chances for a counterplay based on, let's say, this diagonal a7 f2, especially this f2 looks quite attractive to attack. So let's bring the bishop to c5. Rook e5. And I think I can take on f2 here, can't I? I guess this is why rook e5 is not that great, so knight g4 check. And then knight takes e5, the point that bishop h5 pins the knight f3. Most people are interested in chess openings, I guess. Yeah, most likely I will have to at some point post something on this topic as well. But in general, I just want to stick to uh, my niche, so I'm usually focused on chess improvement, and I think that is exactly what I uh, can help you with. All right, analysis board. Uh, there was just a mistake. Uh, the game actually ended in the opening. Um, after d5, ed5 is the main move, if I'm not mistaken, but after e takes d4, the most annoying move is probably bishop to g5. Yeah, d6 is definitely the move that wins a pawn, but after that, white has some problems with coordinating his pieces, and um, there is a big chance for black just to grab that pawn very soon, with these two bishops will be not that hard to do. So... A bishop g5 was interesting here, so my knight is hanging, if I take on d5, uh, then bishop takes d5. My knight is hanging again, and if I take here, bishop takes e7. So taking on d5 is prevented, uh, most likely I have to do something like this. Uh, d takes c3, and after bc3, position remains unclear. Um, but uh, maybe white has something here, like dc6, cd2. And even queen takes d2. Yeah, that was probably the main line. And even if I take on f3, then after this, this, and this, white has a pair of bishops. Yeah, some problems with the pawn structure, but this pawn now is a great power. So I can be mistaken here. I don't remember this. So d5 is double-edged continuation. Uh, but white should be still slightly better at very least, in my opinion. All right. So let's go further. Let's go further and play whom? I think it's time for Simba. So let's play Simba. Let's play Simba. And I'm playing with black. All right. So I don't remember what did we play uh, last time. Okay, last time it was Monday edition and uh, I played Scandinavian or even or even uh, Alicante, Alicante defense. I, I don't remember. Probably Scandinavian. Yeah, I played d5 followed by c6. All right. So here I will play just normal opening. e5. Bishop c4, bishop c5. So Italian, the slow Italian with the d3, which is uh, very similar to Rui Lopez, in fact. Here I usually do this. So I play this a6, d6, h6, kind of limiting the active possibilities of my opponent. And then I just play bishop b6, trying to get rid of this uh, Italian Spanish bishop. So I prefer to call it a Spanish bishop because here we have, as I said, very uh, similar thing to uh, Rui Lopez. So Spanish, Spanish, Spanish. All right, bishop c2 saving the guy on the board and preparing something like b4. And d4 is not a move right away because I control d4 several times, which means I have some time for 
rook e8 and just d5 I guess just d5 now let's play d5 so completing a development and playing in the center very natural thing here since white decided not to play d4 at the early stage of the game so why not to play d5 uh, but only after all the pieces are developed it doesn't guarantee the um, equality or a better position so position remains very uh, unclear in my opinion now I guess to avoid complications I have to take with the queen let's see if I can take for example with the knight or with the bishop if I take with the knight knight takes e5 knight takes e5 rook takes e5 leads to leads to what bishop f2 king f2 queen f6 check with then knight to f3 not that clear bishop takes d5 definitely leads to knight e4 move well i think queen takes d5 should be played here simply protecting everything and preparing another rook to d8 and already just watching this d3 pawn And here I guess I can simply take and take again and just play rook to d8 I think well I have a slightly better ending because it's not clear how to develop this dark squid bishop so where to go with this guy everything is prevented except for d2 but d2 is quite passive e3 leads to actually weakening the pawn structure there is also rook which has been to a2 unless white plays on leg b3 but this limits the own bishop c2 all right king f1 now what bishop c4 is very tempting uh, but king goes to e1 there is no direct follow-up i guess uh, or maybe there is knight b4 c before bishop b4 no there is nothing okay so maybe i have the time just to grab the space like b5 b4 looks interesting now let's try this have a lot of space in fact already why not to grab slightly more Yeah, it's a pleasant position for black at least right now but it's not clear if i will have enough resources to actually prove that i have more than just a good look all right b3 is sort of achievement i guess for me so yeah it limits the activity of my bishop but it also limits the own bishop on c2 now what to do now very tempting just to come up with something like this grabbing more space chronic student said that Simba will be international master soon so Simba, tell me, do you have the norms? Or is it just Kromnik student's impression? And now it's very tempting even to play something like this. All right. So let's say I'll take 
now a3. So if I will get this a2 pawn, this guy in a3 may become a queen. <laughs> At the moment it looks like a dream, but dreams come true, you know this rule. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> let's take this and I think it's time to activate my own keen, otherwise I may be not in time. Knight d2, so the knight goes to b1. It's time to play b4, protecting that a3 pawn. Alright, let's go to the center. One more step. Protecting e5 to free my knight. Now I want my knight somewhere on c5, so let's go to c5. Let's see if it gives me anything. There is also a potential of the breakthrough, I guess. All right, the lesson was learned. So our previous game saw also some problems with that bishop, light squared one. All right, now what to do now? I can bring my knight to c5. Knight to d2. Fixing everything on light squares. Alright, this is another target. That was probably a big mistake. That was a big, big mistake. No, there is no draw, my friend. There is just no draw after that because I'll get to this pawn. This is my new target. That is my new target, so at least. I have an extra pawn. Will be still not that easy to convert it, I believe. Or maybe it will be just an automatic like h3, h2. We will see. Oh, there is something nice. Look at this. I told you that dreams come true, right? So now we will have this great guys h4 and a3 tearing white apart. And Mark is screaming, my friend. That's over. Yeah, look at this poor guy on A1. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So, I had a correct feeling that after this exchange is on E4, uh, I had slightly pleasant endgame. But I think White missed a chance to uh, actually solve all the problems uh, somewhere here. I thought that after b5, uh, all right, b3 was also the move I uh, thought is just okay. Uh, but after a5, and king e2, and a4, I have a feeling that b takes a4 was just possible. Yeah, it looked quite dangerous, but after bishop c4, king e1, and b4, I think why should be all right. Simply protecting that pawn with the bishop. Yeah, it looks very passive, but I don't see a follow-up. She takes, takes. All right, maybe there is something connected with knight b4. But still... Well, I don't know. Maybe it's really dangerous. And yeah, this definitely deserves uh, additional analysis. So this position is quite complicated. So I lose a pawn, but I have some counterplay. But after this, I already felt very comfortable. Uh, the only thing here, I should have... Um, no, that was okay. Here, I guess. C takes b4, knight takes b4, and knight to b1. 
there was a great chance. So knight takes a2, all right, knight takes a3. Yeah, black is probably only uh, nominally better here. Even not better, I guess. Well, the bishop is slightly better. Bishop on e6, but I don't think there is a real chance to achieve anything. But after that, look at this guy on d1. It is just a poor bishop. And the pawn structure is fixed the way uh, which really favors black because in addition to this object of attack, but it's probably not that realistic to get to that pawn easily, I have always this idea of a breakthrough which stops uh, white from doing a variety of different things. So knight f3, king d6, king d3, f6. Yeah, just protecting the pawn and bringing the knight to the uh, good position. Bishop c2, now knight a5, g5, because I'm not against this knight f5 move, I'll just capture it. Uh, by the way, already here I had the chance, by the way, to maybe think of bishop takes c4 move. Also, king to c5 was very interesting, so in this case I want to take on c4 with the knight. And after bc4, bishop c4, I get that pawn, and I have three pawns just rolling there on the queen side. Also an interesting idea. But okay, uh, I didn't have a lot of time, so I wanted to come up with something more um, quiet and understandable. That's why I played this. And now look, my pieces are much better. So it's just a question of time uh, when I activate them even more. So bishop f7, the main idea was to bring the knight to e6 and then to d4. Uh, still getting... Uh, to this pawn b3 and uh, just limiting the bishop c2 even more and then to have c5 square for my king exerting more and more pressure so maybe there is a chance for white to survive it but it's really hard but g4 was a big mistake after h4 it's over so now you have two weaknesses the one on h3 and another one is of course your queen side in general because it is one big weakness uh, because of this possibility of the breakthrough at some point. And after king e2, knight e6, well, I just got that pawn first. And here I saw this typical possibility for uh, this sort of ending just to tear the knight apart. Because knight is very bad against rook pawns, right? And here I have two rook pawns. Yeah, two rook pawns. So there is no chance, of course. In this position, of course, I don't even need the h4, so it's winning. Um, but, uh, well, h4 is very nice because it prevents white from, for example, blockading my king somewhere in the corner after I get that knight. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's go further. Let's go further. And next opponent, too much love. <laughs> Let's play too much love. Nice nickname. D4, knight of six. And e6. That's my favorite choice. So I try to achieve Ninso or Queen's Indian defense position. And here we have Queen's Indian defense starting position. There are a lot of different lines and a lot of interesting transpositions to other opening lines. For example, after knight c3 uh, and bishop b7, again, we have a chance to play Kasparov Petrosian line after a3, and there is also a chance to play bishop g5, which is a hybrid of Nimzo and Queen's Indian. Extremely annoying thing, by the way, for black. But okay, e3 is just a modest move. Uh, where after, I guess, I can even play d5. So I think in this position, I will have a, a good version of Queen's Gambit. 
because the bishop is not on g5, it is on c1 limited with the on pawn. My bad bishop, I mean typically bad for queen's gambit, a light squid bishop is already on b7, which means no, no longer that bad. I control the center, at least e4 square. And my plan is just to complete a development, to put the bishop on d6, if it is possible. Uh, but bishop b5, well, right, I guess I have to play c6 here. What I wanted to do is actually to play a6 and bishop to d6 having the bishop on b7 not limited. So this bishop b5 check is quite good, in fact. Which means that probably I should have played bishop e7 prior to playing d5, waiting for white's light square bishop move, and then d5, because in that case, of course, losing the time with this bishop b5 uh, move wouldn't look very attractive. But bishop a4, that's strange. So I expected uh, bishop to d3, in fact. And that could have been this typical disappearing move. So instead of playing bishop d3 immediately, white got uh, this uh, position with the pawn on c6. All right, but bishop a4, what is the point? I don't think it is a good position for, for, for this guy. I can even play bishop a6 now, just stopping the king from castling, but it is not completely clear because I will have some problems with c6 pawn after knight e5. So I'll just focus on my development. I'll just play bishop d6, castling, and then we will see. So I don't like the position of the bishop here. Most likely it will get to this b1, h7 diagonal anyway, but it is a waste of time because this bishop could have occupied this diagonal immediately after bishop d3. All right. So now I can come back to my initial plan just to play a6 and c5, but it looks ugly. So what to do instead? I can just play knight e4, I guess, if I want. But it's better to do when the knight is on d7 already being ready to support the pawn on e4 after knight f6. So I guess there is nothing wrong with just playing knight to d7. Yeah, this gives white a chance to play e4, but it's not that clear, because in that case there will be an isolated pawn on d4. My knight will get to d5 easily. And there are also some interesting ideas based on like b5, b4, something like that, with the tempo attacking the knight. Also some ideas connected with the c6, c5 counterattack when the pawn is on e4, it may lead to some great complications and it's not clear right now who benefits from those complications so i mean white has to be careful and in general the idea of opening the position in the center when you have not developed pieces and your opponent is better developed at least is not very sound in my opinion Angel Angel says, I could beat you easily. Who knows? Maybe. Almost everyone could beat me easily. Especially when I'm in a bad shape. <laughs> All right, so E4 anyway. All right. Okay, let's take it.
and knight to g5. That is interesting. So what is going to take an e4 next move? Or can I prevent it by playing c6, c5? Just opening the position and activating my bishop. I guess this should be quite interesting for me to play. It's an interesting question from Tom. Uh, would you ever consider 15 plus 15 games? Your commentary uh, is amazing and with more time, that would be cool. Yeah, I also considered it, uh, but I'm not sure that's, um, mm, well, my opponents will be fair. That's, I think, uh, the main issue. I mean, when you have 15 minutes and, for example, the increment of 15 seconds, it's quite easy to use the engine simultaneously with the game. I know that the vast majority, of course, will play fairly, but it is a big problem anyway, nowadays, with longer controls. So I don't know. Maybe at some point I will, I will do this as well. Of course, it is a good idea, right? Because you can explain more, you have more time. Uh, you can come up with a much better quality of play and so forth. That's true. All right, this is a mistake, I believe. So I can take on d4 now. And there should be something connected with the counterattack against this. Or maybe just, I don't know, knight e5, knight c5. Everything looks very attractive here. Maybe just queen to c, no, queen c7, knight b5, come on. But even that works. I mean, I can take on h2 and then take on c2. Okay, let's try queen c7. That is an interesting move. Activating the queen, attacking the pawn, and pinning the knight c3 slightly. All right. Bishop takes e4. I guess I can take here with check. Still have an extra pawn now, bishop to e5. Tempo move going back. And now, well, let's take this. Yeah, I think position remains not that clear, uh, but black has extra pawn a much better development. So I do believe that uh, this bishop a4 was a mistake. So bishop b5 was a good check, forcing me to play c6, limiting my bishop. So it's no longer that simple for me to come up with the ideal setup. What I uh, m what do I mean? Um, if white plays, for example, bishop d3 immediately, I can play a6, covering b5 square, and after castling, I just play bishop to d6. That is the ideal setup, because my bishop occupies quite active position here. And my bishop b7 is not closed with my pawn c6, so it controls e4 square. And that is a very pleasant thing to play. For example, so like queen e2, castles, then knight goes to d7, and uh, rook goes to e8. I have different plans, like c7, c5, or knight to e4. So white usually struggles with this bad bishop, but this is completely playable for white. Uh, this is just uh, not a very uh, ambitious way of playing this, but many players prefer this position with white because uh, black, um, it feels like black has uh, like great attack and so forth. Uh, in fact, so black has to spend a lot of time here to uh, prepare everything uh, carefully and white has some chances uh, in, in a counter-attack, that's the idea. So bishop b5, c6, and bishop a4, I don't like it at all because the bishop occupies strange position here. After rook e1, I should have played, uh, I guess, rook to e8, just preventing e4, because e4 gives white some chances. Of course, I used these chances and uh, won the game, uh, but, uh, well, 
it could have been a good idea just to prevent this bishop c1 uh, from activation because after white played e3, uh, that is the main problem, all right? So preventing e4 looks very, very sound idea. Um, what else? I could have played knight e4 probably. Knight takes e4, d takes e4, knight goes to d2, but I didn't want to force this position so early. But that was also quite interesting. Mm, on the other hand, it is double-edged because the knight now goes here or through f1 to g3. There are different ideas. And the bishop no longer looks that bad because white has the potential of playing d4, d5 at some point. So uh, this idea is usually good for black when there is a direct attack on h2, but there is no uh, such a thing in this situation because if I play queen h4, k knight goes to f1 or even just h3, I have no follow-up there. So I have the same problem like white at the moment, so not, not so many pieces are in play. Not so many pieces uh, influence the position. So first I have to complete my development. But rook e8 made sense just to stop e4, I guess. Okay, knight e7 was okay. But after uh, this, I thought that white would just take this way. So takes, takes. Okay, there is c5, but uh, white can just go away with the rook. Uh, even to h4. No, h4, bishop takes f3, sorry. But rook to e1 should be completely playable. So yeah, position is around... Equal, I guess, maybe black is slightly <clears throat> better because of uh, better development, but I guess it, it should be more or less equal after all. Yeah, this knight g5 gives me additional uh, possibilities. Once again, I thought that uh, here white would take. In this case, I wanted to do something like this, this, maybe this, even then knight to f6, but here bishop to g5. So I don't know. So taking the pawn was vital. So bishop c2 was probably the real mistake. After that, I'm just a pawn up. And queen c7 is most likely not the best move even. So like knight c5 could have been possible. And so on. A lot of good possibilities. So just bishop to e5, let's say. And then take c3 if necessary. Yeah, so this is already a good position. I guess bishop c2 is the main mistake. All right. Uh, let's go further. Let's go further. Uh, who's here? Don G. Let's play. E4. Knight xd4. Why don't you turn on the engine when analyzing your games? Uh, because I don't understand why should I do this. I mean... My point there is to understand everything myself and to show you uh, how the human being actually analyzes the position. Because, come on, what is the point of using engine? Uh, you need the engine only uh, when you, for example, uh, come up with a serious opening preparation. Right, so you came up with some ideas and you just check if they are correct. So for competitive chess and so forth. Well, it may be also a good idea just to check your analysis. Uh, after uh, you did this analysis yourself, because only that is the source of uh, improvement. If you just turn on the engine, the engine does all the work for you. So how can you improve in this case? That's the main problem of using engines in general. By the way, mm, one uh, great player from Ukraine, uh, Andrei Volokitin, uh, who is... Uh, 2700s, I believe, at some point, or very, very close to that. Uh, he said, uh, like, something like, uh, I think that my main mistake was that I just used the engine too much, too heavily. So I missed something. And that's why I didn't make it to the very, very top. 
All right, queen c7 immediately, so black is more or less ready to play b5. So let's just play a4. Bishop e7, all right, let's keep developing the pieces. Bishop e3. And knight to d7. Okay, usually black has a choice between playing knight d7 or knight c6 in these situations. In these positions, so knight d7 uh, is also a good possibility, I guess. Now I like the idea of just playing a5. Slightly limiting black on the queen side. Now let's play f4. Rook b8. Let's go for attack quickly. So with the knight on d7, it will be not that easy for black to coordinate his pieces. Yeah, this move is possible, of course. But I protect e4. And once the knight is on d7, there will be also an interesting idea for me to play b2, b4, maybe. Okay, even bishop to d7. Right, let's play g5 first, just to force the knight to e8. This breaks the coordination. And now if I play b4, the knight is trapped, but there is knight b3 trick. c takes b3, queen takes c3, and uh, okay. I achieved nothing. So probably to make it work, I have the knight protected on c3, so I can play the useful queen to e1 move, preparing the queen to the king side, simultaneously protecting the knight. So now b4 is a real threat. Okay, bishop c6. I can still play b4, knight e7, and even b5 after that. Takes b5, knight b5 with some interest in ideas on the queen side as well. well let's keep this idea as uh, the alternative so let's play f5 because after all that is my main idea after playing g5 just grab the space here it feels like I have a lot of space now so what about just capturing the bishop And now I have an interesting choice between just, yeah, keeping playing here on the king side or just taking on c5. I guess taking on c5 may become very interesting option very soon. Damaging the pawn structure and having much better bishop potentially. But first, let's protect g5. I don't care about this b2. Don't think it matters. So what matters here? Slide squares probably matter. And now, I have a feeling that bishop c5 should be just a great option at some point, but I want to take on c5 only after I have a chance to blockade that c5 to prevent the activation of that. And I'm losing on time, my goodness. I was talking too much. Oh my God. I forgot about the time <laughs> completely. This crap happens from time to time. Oh my. Yeah, this position is strategically winning for white, I guess. 
Well, it's not that clear because knight d6 and so forth. Oh, yeah. This happens. This happens sometimes. Yeah. Only one second. Of course, it's impossible to do something here. To achieve anything unless my opponent, I don't know, blunders a checkmate in one or something, but it's also not that likely, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, rook d4 filled by queen d4, but it doesn't matter anymore. So how this happened? I don't understand. Oh, maybe we were playing three minute. No, we were playing five minute game. I don't understand how this happened. I was just thinking a lot about other things. <laughs> That's strange. So Ivan Maximov asks, hello, do you love vodka? No, I don't. So that was an interesting game, in fact. So a five castles, f4, rook b8, g4 here, bishop d7 was probably a mistake. I think it was necessary for black to come up with the counterattack already playing something like b5 in this position. Or maybe b6, just undermining the pawn, having a chance to open up uh, the b file at least. <clears throat> and after a b6, rook b6, there is some pressure on b2 and so forth. So that was an interesting thing, because after bishop d7, I'm just squeezing black, more or less. Uh, here it was potentially interesting for me just to play f5 right now. I don't know why did I play this queen e1, I was really tempted by this possibility of b4. So why b4 doesn't work immediately, because of this knight b3 move. I mean, it it is possible to play this with white, but white doesn't win a lot. Uh, maybe even nothing. So queen takes c3, attacking here. So white is still better, I believe, but um, I guess it's the step in the wrong direction. So I guess f5 was just correct here. And if e5 just, well, even knight to d5 is possible. Yeah, this position is uh, very close to winning. Um, yeah, here g5 is hidden, so maybe knight e5 is not needed right now, so maybe just knight e2, and if bishop c6, I just bring my knight to g3, protecting everything, and then at some point f6 and knight f5 becomes another great attacking resource. Yeah, queen e1 was strange. Bishop c6, f5, e5, knight 2 on c6, which is also not uh, that um, forced, so I could have played this still. Knight to e2, and then knight to g3, uh, with the idea of f6 and knight to f5, for example. That was an interesting idea. But okay, knight c6, b6 here, I just played h4. Maybe again, not necessary move, but uh, all right, that was okay. f6. Mm, and here I could have played something like b4, by the way. Why didn't I play this? I don't know. I just didn't see that. So rook takes b4, I just play knight e5. Nice, isn't it? So if cd5, I just take b4. If queen protects the rook, I just take on e7, then I take this rook on b4. And if black doesn't take black doesn't take on b4, then knight is forced to a passive position somewhere on d7. And well, I have so many different uh, ideas, like bishop e2 attacking a6, or maybe just protecting b4 first and so forth. But I lost in time, come on. Okay. <laughs> when Andre fixed his time management, we're all doomed. Yeah, it will never happen, of course. Uh, you're right, Fuxia, because, yeah, I have to explain a lot. Come on. I need at least, I don't know, 10 minutes, probably, to experience no time troubles at the same time uh, keeping this level of discussion, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Andre, have you ever lost to a GM, a GM norm in a winning position because of time? Uh, no, no. Uh, there were only two things that uh, happened to me. So two types of uh, relationship with the GM norm making. So I'm really far from GM norm. So I'm just not doing the GM norm. 
uh, or well I'm just making the GM norm so since it happened only once because I have only one GM norm well uh, there were no uh, cases based on like losing on time and by the way in the real game I have no problems with the time management so I actually uh, in the vast majority of cases uh, I'm in time this happens only during my live uh, streams because I explain a lot when I played for example when I play on my own simply play blitz right I have no problems with the time so that is just a specific uh, feature of my live streams because I uh, try to explain a lot. That's it. All right, so let's play one more. I think uh, it will be the last for today. Um, and uh, let it be Redix. Okay, let's try C5 this time. Andre, do you have any GM norms? Yeah, I have the one. Knight of three. So now we have just a normal Sicilian, but without B pawns. Interesting, isn't it? So it gives me some additional objects of attack and additional possibilities based on this. But what also can benefit from that, I think. So what about knight f6 here? If I take on e4, knight e4, bishop e4, bishop f7, knight g5 is coming. So I'll play e6 instead. Just covering the f7 and preparing development of my bishop. It will be nice at some point to play d5, but I think that white will just play e5. Himself stopping me from that. Andre, do you use cheats, chess killer? Say to all how you cheat. What is that? What's a chess killer? I don't understand. I don't understand this question. Especially the second one, say to all how you cheat. I don't cheat, my friend. Oh. <sighs> It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Strange questions. So rook b1 attacking my bishop and that's a big question where to go. Because if I play bishop c6 then knight goes to e5 and it might be annoying slightly. If I play bishop to a6, I lose the control over d5 square and e5 becomes possible. All right, so let's play bishop c6. I think if... Ah, oh, okay, my friend. One more motherfucker here. So e5. Now let's go here. Ninety four. All right. So this position is unclear. Now I have some problems with the d6 square and c5. Pawn, but. 
there are also some problems with white's center right now. So it's very tempting now to play knight b6. Creates a threat of taking on c4. I don't know if it is a good idea, in fact. Because f5 is also an interesting move. Yeah, I guess f5 should be correct. So, I mean, it's very natural to get rid of this pawn because I think white is forced to take on passo. Yeah. So many years ago, of course, I had a chance to deal with such a pawn structure. When I played Sicilian, uh, of course, not after b4, because no one actually played b4 against me. Uh, but there were some lines <clears throat> If I remember correctly, after White's second move c3, that led to similar situations when I had pawns e6, d7, c5 against e5. Interesting. And after this move. Okay, I'm happy because I have pair of bishops. And this bishop potentially is very good. So look, I have an interesting plan now. Since I control this diagonal, um, maybe at some point I will come up with g5, g4. Oh, 92, that is strange. Now I will just give up this guy. I guess it's worth doing. Just to uh, make this pawn structure very bad. And I think I will just sacrifice even more. Opening up the F file against these pawns. Especially the one on F3. Alright, let's go for this bishop. Okay, let's bring the queen there. I think without the queen, it will be very hard to achieve anything. Position looks very promising for black because black has a clearer plan of just playing against all those weaknesses. But it doesn't mean it will be an easy stuff. So at the moment, I can see some moves leading to. Black's weaknesses. So, for example, h3 is already mine, I guess. And this bishop on h2 is also a big weakness for white. Knight to g1. All right. Now it's time to understand how to break through. It's not that simple, in fact. So let's bring the knight to the center first. Just want to provoke a weakening of the position. So for example, if white plays c3, just come back. Uh, to c6 and then d3 is weakened. All right, here I think I have to protect d7 somehow, or maybe just c4. I don't know, let's go for this one. This looks much more active. Maybe it was not good. 
for right now. Feels not that bad. In general, because of that bishop mainly, so that bishop has no perspectives. So even if I lose some pawns, I think it won't really affect my position. Yeah, so that bishop remains there. Okay, now let's go for White's other weaknesses. It will be very hard for White to survive it. Unless I blunder something. I'm just collecting White's material. And... White can do nothing actually because I control the position completely. And that bishop just struggles. Okay, now it's time to take it, I guess. Yeah, won the game, was interesting fight, but I think White's serious problems started when he played, uh, first of all, bishop takes d5, giving up a bishop, and after bishop d5 played this knight e2. Knight e2 was a serious mistake. I thought what would play something like d4 here. That made a big sense, by the way. Uh, so if I take on d4, you just take with the knight, and you start exerting some pressure on the d7 pawn. So this at least looked unclear to me. Uh, knight e2 is a serious mistake. After that, I just take here. May maybe f4 wasn't the best move, but it was also quite natural. And when I saw that guy, well, I was already happy, because now it will be very hard for white to survive it. It doesn't really matter if I achieve anything directly, but uh, it is a long-term problem, right? So this bishop will remain there, and we just saw uh, how it worked. Uh, I s just uh, gave up several pawns, but it didn't change the situation on the board because that bishop was the uh, main feature of the of the position. So, uh, as for this moment, I think after f5, uh, e takes f6 was a move. And... Uh, Okay, I will also answer the question about uh, why I played bishop c6 very soon. So here I thought that was not clear. Mm, knight takes f6. Well, here I have some play based on d5, in fact. Quick d5. But there are also some questions. For example, knight g5 isn't clear completely. I can't play d5, I believe. Instead of uh, this d5, I have to do something with the knight, but if I play h6, well, I weaken my position even more. There are some maybe combinations. Do you know, this position is absolutely unclear to me, but maybe black is fine here. Which means that uh, probably this e5 was... Um, not at the right moment, or maybe here, maybe here, just to take on d5, right? And after e d5 to play d4. Yeah, that was the correct way of playing this. Just look at this bishop. It is definitely not cool. And my pawns on d5 and d7 are also not very inspiring. So yeah, here, instead of knight e4, I guess knight e4 is a mistake. The first wrong move. So bishop d5 takes d5 and d4. E even if I take with the bishop, the same. Just knight e5 takes and d4. What has a better pawn structure? So these pawns are weaknesses. All right. And why instead of uh, bishop c6 didn't I play queen c7 or something? Uh, I didn't like the idea of uh, knight to b5, to be honest. That was my main concern here, just attacking my queen. Uh, and uh, I don't know where to put it. Because if I play this, then knight e5, very bad. If I play queen to c8, then bishop to f4, just get into d6 square and so forth. Okay. So I think, yeah, this is just bad. Queen c7 is bad in general. Oh, I guess bishop c6 is more or less fine. Um, so I don't think black has a better option. So I didn't want to play this uh, because of, again, the following thing. So bishop a6, by the way, rook b8 is also possible here. Just, yeah, grabbing the knight and grabbing the bishop for the rook. So bishop a6 isn't a move at all. All right, bishop c6 are here. Yeah, e5 is one possibility, followed by this. 
exchange on d5. Another possibility was just to keep the tension slightly, just waiting a bit and playing bishop to f4. And one more was just to grab my bishop, which was also quite interesting in my opinion. Um, in which case, however, I can even try this. So takes, 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 okay, bishop d5, the knight to the center. Uh, I think I'm fine here. As a knight is very cool. If something goes wrong, I can put it on e6. So this bishop is not clear if uh, it gets serious perspectives. So yeah, unclear position. Maybe just a round equal. Don't know. Uh, yeah, so e5 deserved attention, but then it was necessary to take on d5 because that position resulted with this doubled pawns on f3 and uh, actually with my bishop wasn't that clear. Don't know. Interesting fight. Thanks a lot. And thanks to everybody for being with me, uh, for following my shows. Um, I will be very happy if uh, you learned something new today. Uh, you're welcome tomorrow to uh, our Monday edition of Learn From uh, Chess Bleeds. And once again, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, follow me on, on Twitter to be notified about my live streams in time and also uh, about other activities, uh, including some uh, almost everyday chess puzzles to solve. Uh, and also, if you have the time and desire, you can uh, follow me on Twitch TV dot, uh, not dot, but slash Mastrovsky, uh, because I will be doing a lot of live streams on chess.com as well uh, during these upcoming weeks. Have a nice evening or Monday or day. Uh, I don't know from where you watch this. Uh, many thanks again and see you very soon. Bye bye.